I'm sure you guys have seen some of this news about the massive wave of big tech layoffs. Just Google alone has laid off over 12,000 employees. One Google engineer in particular got their layoff message sent to her on LinkedIn while she was on vacation. And another one got laid off while they were feeding their baby at 4 a.m. while they were on maternity leave. Very sad. Amazon had even bigger layoffs. Over 18,000 employees have been let go from Amazon since November, according to the email that was sent out by their CEO, Andy Jassy. And it almost seems like the rest of big tech are jumping onto this bandwagon. It seems like they're copying Elon Musk's playbook from when he took over Twitter because Elon fired something like half, like between half and two thirds of the company. But I guess it makes sense. I mean, we've seen the TikTok and Instagram videos from former employees about a day in the life at the Twitter office where they seem to actually spend most of their work day, most of their time getting snacks, doing yoga, drinking smoothies, and just doing everything but working. And look, I get that when you do a development job, there's problems that you can get stuck on and it can end up really being more productive for you to just take a 20 minute break from the problem and come back to it with a fresh mind so that you can actually solve it instead of just sitting there pounding your head for an hour and not actually finding a solution. But when I watch these videos, I don't see people that are just taking a quick break. It's like they're taking a break from a break. It's one break followed by another. The whole day is just one long break. The Google girl was probably the most karmatic example of all of this because she had this one video showing off her day in the life at Google, what it was like for her to be working at Google. One of these really prestigious big tech jobs that everybody wants, right? But she never once showed herself working. And no, I don't count the meetings where four minutes of the meeting is actual business that's being discussed, which let's be honest, it would be better off if it was just an email. And then the rest, the 26 minutes of this half hour meeting are people talking about their boring normie weekends. Look, you guys know how I feel about meetings, but I don't shed too many tears for the people that are posting about their day in the life of being a laid off Google employee because there are job opportunities out there. You can pull yourself up and you can go and get a new job. There's agencies that are actively recruiting like the NSA. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the National Security Agency has sent out their talent scouts to start hiring a lot of the furloughed big tech employees. And considering that it's the NSA, you know, the agency that's responsible for monitoring everybody's emails, they probably knew that a lot of these employees were going to get laid off before they did. I imagine that the recruitment letters that are getting sent out to some of these people say something like, hey, we saw an email in your boss's outbox and it looks like you're gonna be available for some new employment opportunities. How about serving your country and coming to work for the National Security Agency? Well, you know what they always say, if you can't make it in the private sector, you're better off going to work for the government. I wonder if we're going to start seeing videos on TikTok and Instagram. Well, I guess just Instagram because I think TikTok is banned for government employees, but you know what I mean. We're going to start seeing these uh, cell phone shot videos all on the normie social medias that aren't banned for the federal employees of a day in the life of an NSA agent. Oh, look at me, guys. I'm gonna get a smoothie and I'm gonna go and do some yoga. And then after I eat my gluten-free salad, I gotta go mine through some metadata of some Russian guy named Ivan so that I can figure out exactly where his coordinates are and then route that information to the drone division of the Ukrainian military that drops the grenades in the foxholes. I can't wait for the YouTube shorts of a bunch of secret agents in a spin class. And for some reason, the spin class instructor is also in an NSA agent that goes, all right, ladies, let's start kicking things up a gear and finish these last few miles quick and strong. We just got word that the Taliban have built a sports car <laughs> and we gotta shut that down before the terrorists get into NASCAR. 
yes, please protect the national sport of Burgerland from the Taliban supercars that are powered by a four-cylinder Toyota Corolla engine. And please also protect our other national sport, monster truck derbies, from jacked up Taliban monster trucks. Don't let them get any ideas, okay? There's, there's probably... There's probably some Toyota trucks laying around that they could put very big wheels on. All right. Now, technically, the NSA doesn't just spend all of their time scanning text messages and emails for the word jihad and protecting our national burger sports. There's another side of the NSA, which is the Central Security Service, and their job is to provide technical support, mainly assistance with cryptography and stuff like that to the U.S. military and the Department of Defense, because, well, you know, there's a bunch of old boomers that are working there that are uh, easily susceptible to things like Google ads and all these other low-hanging fruit that we see in the wild. So yeah, there, it's a whole department that's dedicated to making sure that these guys are not getting hacked. And they also help develop cryptographic standards like AES that are used for various civilian applications as well. But I honestly don't know which job is gonna be worse for us, you know, for us citizens uh, to see these people that are laid off from big tech to go into. Specifically, the people that are spending all of their day doing nothing. If they take the important role, you know, the CSS role of developing cryptographic algorithms and helping to keep the Department of Defense from getting hacked, then I want to have some insurance that they're actually going to work, you know, that they're actually going to be doing their job. And for some reason, I don't think that the best algorithms are developed during yoga lessons or at a smoothie bar. For some reason, these just don't seem like people that are going to be able to keep the Department of Defense from getting hacked. And maybe it is better if, in that case, that they end up being the NSA employees that are tasked with monitoring citizens' emails, listening to all their phone calls and their text messages, gathering all that metadata, you know, that good stuff. Because they might just be so inept that they actually end up doing worse at the surveillance than the people before them. But either way, the big tech layoffs and then people getting scooped up by the NSA and other state departments, either way you look at it, the end result is that it's costing you, the taxpayer. After all, where do you think these salaries for the Fed boys come from? How do you think these NSA agents are actually getting paid? It all comes from tax money. And because of this, there is no reason for the NSA to turn a profit. I mean, hell, I don't even know how the NSA would be able to turn a profit at all, except for maybe selling intelligence to other countries. But you know what's even worse than our tax system and the money from it that's going to fund the NSA spying on all of us? It's the relationship that big tech companies clearly have with these federal agencies. We already know in many cases that Google and other companies have public relationships with government agencies that in certain circumstances, big tech will help law enforcement with catching criminals or in some cases just automatically report certain criminal activity to law enforcement. But people going from working at these big tech companies to the NSA shows that the relationship goes much deeper. You gotta think that if people are working at social media companies and these big tech companies that other people are voluntarily giving a lot of their data to for free, that the NSA would be interested in getting access to that data or perhaps even getting insight into how the back ends of these big tech platforms work. And I'm talking way beyond social media. Like with Google, you have office tools, okay? You have um, Writer, you've got a like a Google version of Microsoft Excel, you know, all of these Google Docs tools. And you've got Gmail, of course. These are tools that just about everybody uses. AWS, which again, that's a platform that's used by almost everyone. So it's really creepy from a privacy standpoint, but don't worry guys, there's policies in place to keep that kind of stuff from happening. You know, there's protecting different interests. Oh no, once you go from Google, you have to forget everything that you learned there and you totally can't bring that over to your job at the NSA. And plus the federal government, they would never do something like hire ex-Google employees to assist with they're spying on the U.S. citizens. No, no, no. That's just silly. Uh, carry on with your days.